Hey everyone, welcome to JLake 3D. So today we're gonna be working on an interesting little mushroom. And I wasn't really planning on doing this, it just kind of came up and I wanted to show you a couple things that came up in the workflow that I think you guys should know. So let's say you're working with splines because you wanna draw something that's not, let's say for manufacturing, but you wanna kind of work like in an OBJ, kind of like in Blender or something. But let's just get into it. I'll show you guys how it's done. So. We start out by, let's say, making our little splines, right? That's the mushroom stem. And we're gonna use the revolve tool to help us with that. So for now, this is fine. And then we're gonna go and make another one here. And we have our mushroom and we can adjust as required, right? And we have a mushroom, kind of looks like Maple Story if you guys ever played that, because that's what I played when I was a kid. Uh, so what we need to do now is to draw a line in the center so we can revolve it, right? And what issue are you seeing right now? As you can see, this is a closed sketch and this one is an open sketch. So how do you find it? Um, the way to close it. So first of all, you look, you have to zoom in. This one's sealed and this one is not. And the reason for that is because this spline, even though I clicked it twice here in this area to make sure that it was as straight as possible, it still left a small gap. So we need to adjust that. But let me show you a little trick. So for example, you have a larger project and you have an issue that comes up that's like this. What you can do is you can make a grid and you can then go and see Oh, there it is. That's the one that's open. See, very easy to find once you know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and cancel that out and adjust our little line. And there's a couple more things I wanna show you, but let's go ahead and revolve this first around the center axis. Now we have our mushroom and I like to change the colors that I'm working on so that I can actually see it better but let's go ahead and add one more detail. Okay, so typically these mushrooms are poisonous, they have a little circle. Uh, and we're going to rotate that by 90 degrees in that direction and in, let's do 45 degrees in this direction. Pull it out just a little bit. And typically my advice to you uh, would be just two tools project, you get one, and then you rotate this by let's say 45 degrees and then you project again. But just, I wanted to show you one little detail. Uh, so for example, for some projects, it's not as easy as rotating and you need multiple pieces, right? So you can either copy around the center, which would be you go down here so you can assign it there and you copy it over. That's one way. Or now we can use the pattern tool, which is a great addition, but we still need to find that center. So let's go ahead and now rotate this by 360 degrees. And we can now see how much we want. So for example, six, right? And projecting well, you would say, well, Drew, why are you projecting one at a time when you can just select all of them, right? And then project all at once. But the problem that arises is that the projection is direction-based, right? So I click this, it spreads it around like nobody's business. So this is actually the same way you would project text. So for example, if I wanted text, uh, you know, around my object, I would have to do the same method of one at a time. So for example, add text, I select here, let me actually select this more and add text. Then I type one letter at a time, let's say D, make it and then uh, center. Okay, and now I can project this right versus if I wanted to do wrap text we can't do that in shaper yet 
and if I tried to wrap it, it would just end up just like the squiggly lines that we had earlier. All right, so in this case, you have to project one at a time. Therefore, you have to rotate or use the pattern tool to put them all around and then tools project one at a time if you want the best result. Sometimes you can get away with two, but as you can see, the spacing is already off. So that's why I decided to make this tutorial just to show you guys this, because I came across this in the project a long time ago, but it just came up again in something else I was working on. And I wanted to share it with you guys so that you can have some workflow tips that you can plan ahead with. Because now that we have these, let's hide all these sketches. And we might need them later as a reference. So we're just gonna put them in the folder and hide them. And we actually forgot one, so let's go back there benefit to the folder too. You just unhide it all. And now we just select all of these. I'm going to visualize them in white. And we now have our poison mushroom. And you can use this for like a game asset or something. But this basically was just a workflow tutorial to make you think and to be able to create in three dimensions without having issues and so you can have fun in shaper because it's a lot better <laughs> and more fun obviously when you're not struggling to find out like what's the problem uh hope you guys learned something don't forget to like share and subscribe i will see you guys in the next one and if you have any questions don't forget you can comment below and i will answer i'm pretty uh, i'm pretty much on here all the time just because i like sharing uh, what i learned and i learned it the hard way by spending hours, countless hours in Shaper. And my goal is to pass on that knowledge to you so that you have a much better time and you can have fun. And don't forget to give back to the community. Enjoy, I'll see you guys next time, bye-bye. Here at JLake 3 d our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.